The movie's bigger than all of us. I've waited a very long time, and the last one was 25 years ago with Joy Luck Club. It is a dream come true to be part of a movie that is such, um, it's, you know, it's a cultural marker, like, it, everybody's gonna remember this movie. I grew up in Malaysia. I'm from London. Richmond, Virginia. Hometown Melbourne. I'm Australian, if you can't tell from the accent. I grew up in Hong Kong. I grew up on the east coast of Malaysia. I grew up in England. Silicon Valley, Los Altos Hills, California. I'm from Queens, New York. I come from a really small mining city in Malaysia called Ipoh. I was born on the island of Singapore, and then I was forcibly removed by my dad and planted into suburban Houston, Texas. Even though when I was in pre-med at Duke, I had this yearning to be an actor. I just didn't know if I if that could be a viable profession, or so my dad told me. I walked into a casting studio. I was talking to them and they're like, can you do a Chinese accent? Back then I was just like, yeah. And so I did one and they're like, great, come in tomorrow and let's, uh, let's have you dub the new Jackie Chan film. I think when I was a, a, a young child, I never, never imagined that one day I would be on the silver screen. I did uh, stand-up comedy uh, for a long time in San Francisco, and then I was like, you know what, I'm gonna move to Los Angeles and try and make it, and uh, I had no intention of acting. I came down here just to really do the comedy thing, and then acting just sort of happened. I went to Australia for law school. Uh, which is undergraduate in Australia. And after law school, I started doing stand-up comedy. And I was doing stand-up comedy in Australia up till two years ago when I joined The Daily Show of Trevor Noah. I went to college as an economics major because that was like the easiest major that can still please your Asian parents. And then to much of their dismay, I became a stand-up comedian just because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I went to university, to college. I ended up studying law. I then auditioned for drama school in secret and only told my mum and dad when I got in. My dad said to me, it doesn't matter how good you are or how talented you are, but that how many faces do you see on the screen that look like ours? I remember growing up uh, as a kid and um, not seeing a lot of people on the big screen or even behind the screen that looked like me. So it was always a hope and a dream to make it there, but knowing that it was a slim chance. I auditioned for a show called Fresh Off the Boat. Um, and. It was huge to so many people. At the end of the day, the thing that I loved about it is that it's something that kids can watch with their families and feel like their stories matter. As a kid, I always felt felt left out. I didn't see myself my, and my image um, in media, and it is quite damaging to, to self, to not, to not be validated, um, not see your own image Represented. When you have someone who looks like you, it's something you can kind of grab onto and it makes you feel better about your place in the world, it makes you feel more secure about it. Growing up in Malaysia, you know, there wasn't really a problem with representation. We, we, we saw faces like ours on screen and so it was only until I went back to the UK where I realised that, like, where did all these faces go? I grew up in Singapore and Singapore at the time, you know, there was such an amazing flood of Asian movies and there was you know we had our own channels we had our own TV shows there were Asian soap op operas on all the time but then I moved to America when I was 11 and then there were none you know when I was about seven years or eight years old I saw Margaret Cho on Comedy Central she was the first Asian American woman that I ever saw um, she was funny without the influence of being Asian at all she was just funny you know and this this would sound, would sound stupid now but it meant something to me as a kid she had a perfect command of, of English. And I remember thinking, like, not that, like, oh, well, she did it, I can do it, but, like, oh, well, it, it, it can be done. It can be done. I never thought in a million years I'd get a chance to write for my people for a major Hollywood movie, so I was in. I did not. I think the whole industry did not realize how important this movie would be for not just Asian Americans, but contemporary Asian talents to have a movie that talks about them. There's one thing to be deeply passionate about a film, but to be emotional about it from a cultural standpoint, I don't think I've ever felt this way. I hope it presents a whole new chapter in Hollywood where we have much more inclusion, much more stories that showcase the diversity of, you know, the full scope and range of who Asians are. Asians from, you know, the UK, Asians from America, Asians from Singapore, Asians from Australia, all of us are in the same room making a big 
studio Hollywood movie, it just felt really special and all of us were so much on the same page. We became a family and uh, we were all passionate about creating something that was more than a movie um, that, like John says, was a movement. One cool thing about the movie is that it shows Singapore as a character in the film, the way New York is a character in a Woody Allen film. Because usually when Hollywood goes to Asia, it's because James Bond goes there for like a one night stand and then he leaves the next day. There's nobody doing martial arts in this movie. There's nobody fleeing villages. You know what I mean? We just get to be really awesome people. John Chu showed me the dailies and, and I cried and I couldn't tell if it was coming from like an actress standpoint or an Asian American, someone who's lived in this country with so little representation. And, and I realized that that is the power, the privilege of, of having representation in a country where you grew up in and that you love so much. We live out all of these sort of crazy stories in terms of love and um, adventure and why can't it come from an Asian perspective. So I think about my young self, I think about my daughter who was just born a year ago and what I, the world I want her to live in. And I want her to live in a world where she's seeing Constance Wu, Michelle Yeoh, Lisa Liu be these strong people that, that, that don't need a man in their life to be uh, fulfilled and know that they're worth every inch of their existence and can be anything and do whatever they want. Seeing the and hearing the reactions of people um, particularly, of course, Asian people. It's so touching and it, it, it raises the stakes of the film. We know that the representation or lack thereof of not just Asians but other minorities in the media and in popular culture directly affects how those minorities are treated in everyday life. And that's why it means so much to me that this is a Hollywood studio making and promoting this film. And I hope it's the beginning of something I hope it opens the door for more diverse and inclusive storytelling across the board, not just for Asians.